Yeah. You can plug it back in there, but since price is like negative related, yes, yeah, so go on. Uh, what is that 45 degree angle? It's just nine. It's because uh, it's, you know, it's only called the total piece of money. Just highlight me that uh, this point here, uh, QA equals to Q.
Form 1 sets a quantity, and then form 2 goes there, observes the quantity form 1 uh, sets, and then make the decision which quantity to produce. It's a sequential game. Symmetric. Who do you guys think has an advantage in this game? Form A or form B? Anyone here? Kayla thinks it's B. Anyone thinks it's A? Well, in some games it's better to move first, in some games it's better to move, to move last. We have some divergent opinions. Good. Let's see. In the penalty game, well, if you're going to decide to jump or kick, it's better to move first. Okay, because if you jump before, the guy just kicks the other side. Uh, let's see in this game here who has advantage. It's not clear. There are good reasons to be forced, there are good, good reasons to be patient. Well, it's a strategy for A is just a quantity. A just has to prescribe a quantity. But a strategy for B is a, is a mapping from history to quantity. So for every quantity that he observes A producing, B has to produce some. The solution concept we're going to imply here is a subgame perfect mesh equilibrium. We're trying to find the subgame perfect mesh equilibrium of this game. <coughs> subgame perfect Nash equilibrium of this game. Of any game. <coughs> and here. A backward induction. Let's show this by backward induction. First, then B moves and chose QB as a function of QA. So let's see what is B problem. So B has to maximize A minus B total quantity times QB minus CQB. And the total quantity is exactly the same as they had in Uno. So it's just A minus B QB minus B QA times QB minus C QB. Okay, look at it. It's exactly the same problem as we had before. Because when it gets to the point, it just, she just takes the quantity that A has produced as given and takes for sure the condition and maximizes the, the, the quantity that you would like to produce. So the first order condition is going to give the same first order condition as we had before.
Okay, this is how form B is going to respond. Same thing as we had in corridor before. But now the difference goes to form A. Because form A knows that B is going to respond to what they do. So when they maximize the, when they check the, the they maximize their profit, they have to take in consideration that the profit is influenced by several, several, in several different levels by their quantity. The quantity increases the cost, the quantity increases the revenue, the quantity increases directly the price, because the more they produce, the smaller the price, but the quantity also influences the price through the channel that influences the quantity of that one was produced. One bit too bad. But what they want to do here is to maximize QA, A minus B, QA minus B, QB star, times QA minus C, QA. But they know that this QB is going to be the optimal QB star. They're going to respond to, your, uh, to what your firm does. So this is equal to maximize QA, A minus B, QA minus B times this guy here. Just going to put down minus 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 So the first order condition here of this problem, okay, all the forces here are in here. If I increase the quantity, I increase the total cost. If I increase the quantity, I'm going to sell more. If I increase the quantity, I reduce the price because uh, I increase the price because uh, uh, I decrease the price because I produce more. But if I increase the quantity, I also diminish the price because I know the other guy is going to produce less. So all the effects are taken into account here, and you're going to maximize and find the solution for the problem. And the solution, the first one, the first one, the Stuckelberg. This is what form A produces in this model. And now, it's just by coincidence, in this case, exactly the same as a monopoly would produce. But it's not a, but you have to see now, they're not alone in this market. We have to see what is the optimal thing for uh, for from B to produce now. So, since QB store G 
stress equal to A minus C divided by 2B minus QA divided by 2, right? Yes. So this is going to be equal A minus C divided by 2B minus A minus C divided by 4B. Nice. So in this game, who moves first at the start? Form A has moved first, and we got a bigger quantity than form B. The total quantity in this market, the quantity for Stuckelberg in the market is, again, QA plus QB, which is equal to A minus C divided by QB plus A minus C divided by form B. Which is so now in this class we have saw how to use some of the tools. Not all, but some of the tools that we, that we saw in game theory to solve basic problems of uh, induced organization. I hope that the remaining of the classes is going to be something similar to all, because we have to learn more about game theory, just apply to different frameworks. The only different tool that we learned here, that we haven't learned, was how to solve games using best of okay. And I hope we've had a few examples. I hope they work. I hope some of you for six. I'll post a <coughs> homework, next homework, homework solution today, and the next homework, uh, hopefully into tomorrow. Uh, if you still want your homework one, you can come here and pick them up.